1928 six ton Lombard number uh, Model T dump truck and it's on loan here to the museum uh, from the Breton family so let's take a look at it have a little walk around and see how neat what a neat machine this actually is so around the mid 1920s Lombard wanted to break into uh, larger markets particularly uh, uh, construction municipal for road plowing etc their traditional market had always been uh, logging so with a new set of investors out of New York that were uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, Elvin Mechanical Stoker Company, they decided to develop a, a range of machines that were ideal for construction. So you had the 15-ton uh, Model CS88, or Contractor Special. Uh, you also had a 20-ton Model GT, which was an absolute beast. And at the bottom end, you had the 6-ton Model T. So the 6-ton Model T, there's several different... It, it kind of evolved <laughs> uh, as it went along. So this particular machine, uh, it's powered by a six-cylinder Hercules YXC2 engine. Uh, it's rated about 98 horsepower. We've got, uh, it's not set up to have skis. It has the hard, hard rubber tires. These are the original tires for this particular machine. Uh, if we walk around to the cab, our controls are a little bit different than our 10-ton uh, uh, Lombard, which is made for logging. We can see up here we've got our throttle. Uh, there would be a magneto advance and retard. Uh, that's got damaged years ago, so that's gone. We've got our brake. We've got our clutch. We've got a four-speed transmission and our handbrake. What's interesting with this machine is not only is it four-speed, but it's also four speeds forward and four speeds in reverse. This lever right here, this is for your forward and reverse. Right now it's set for reverse. If I pull it all the way back, then that is uh, forward. On the opposite side, will you stop? So over on this side of the cab, we can see this lever right here, this is to raise and lower the body. And we put a lockout, mechanical lockout, because we're afraid if we're hauling passengers that they'd be able to hit this with their foot and knock it in and out, and it was a safety issue. Underneath the seat, we've got, a, we've got our fuel tank. Let's take a look at the track system on this because it's different than any other Lombard that you've ever seen. All right. So unlike the 10-ton uh, tractors that Lombard built for logging, uh, on those you had uh, your tracks, then you had a set of roller chains that actually acted as your idler wheels, your bogey wheels. That doesn't work so well in sand and gravel. So he came up with a more traditional design. You've got your, uh, your track wheels here and that whole thing pivots, so it pivots up and down. It's also sealed, your bearings are sealed. The uh, tracks are interesting because these cleats are interchangeable. So we could actually undo these and we could put on a different style cleat. For instance, if we're working on a, on a highway project or whatever, we can put on a less aggressive cleat so it doesn't damage the pavement. A lot of these machines were used for plowing uh, in the wintertime, so they have the aggressive cleat. One of the interesting things with this track system is how flexible it is. For instance, uh, you've got this that oscillates, but also if you look up here, the track adjustment, you've got a dovetail uh, way actually right here, and you've got a set of gibs, and this whole system is made to slide back and forth. Now this one hasn't moved for decades, you can see it just it's C solid, but it's actually made to give so, so that as you're driving over obstacles, whatever, that track will actually move. The other thing is that's cool is it's self-adjusting. So on this track system, you can see you've got this yoke right here. This is connected to your uh, uh, front shaft bearings. It has an adjustment screw here. But if you look right here, there's a bell crank. And as that track moves, as you drive over an ob obstacle, that, this will actually pivot. And underneath here, right underneath here, you can see there's a large spring that runs across. That spring actually keeps constant tension on the track. So as the track... Uh, goes over obstacles, it'll stay tight. Also, it's self-adjusting as it wears. So again, because these machines are made to work in construction or municipality, uh, it has a six-yard dump body. Now, that six-yard is level with the top. There's actually another set of planks that's supposed to go on the top of this, a batter board. Obviously, to heap it up, you're going to get more than six yards. You have to remember, while that doesn't sound like a lot now, because a big wheeler dump truck will hold, what, 14 yards, 10, 14 yards, somewhere in there. Uh, Back in the day when this was brand new on the market, your average truck could maybe hold one and a half to three yards. So it was a big change. 
So the rear end in these machines, again, is different than the uh, 10 ton logging tractors. Uh, for instance, in the logging tractor, you just have a huge pinion gear and that's it. This one here, you've got a worm gear going down to differential gear. Then you've got a uh, pinion gear uh, providing reduction to your main gear, which is right here that runs your shafts. Uh, the other interesting thing about this is it has a mechanical hoist made by the... Uh, uh, we'll so this machine has a Garwood mechanical hoist. Uh, there is no hydraulics. You can see the pinion gears and there's actually uh, rack gears, curved racks that go up and as it hoists, it, uh, it raises the body, which is really cool. Um, Garwood uh, invented some of the very first hoist mechanisms. They're extremely popular. Uh, he also went on and, uh, and, and of course, Garwood Boats. He was famous race, boat racer, etc. Jerry's going to a race event. machine, like I said, was made in 1928. It was actually uh, bought new by the town of Gore, Maine. It was probably used to plow snow. Eventually it ended up being owned by Starbird Lumber, which uh, I believe they used it for the plow snow on the logging roads. We're not really sure. What we do know in the 1980s, the uh, Breton family acquired, or actually Harry Crooker acquired it, and then it went to the Breton family. Um, like all Lombards, this was made right in Waterville, Maine. So it's a Maine-made product, which is pretty cool. actually doing the greasing because particularly this one because it's got all the uh, high pressure uh, pin type fittings and you have to crawl underneath the thing and it's got like 10,000 fittings looks like fun Terry yeah it is fun it's something's relaxing about laying under an old machine and just laying there going you know what this is pretty cool it takes